Hey, welcome to High 45, a discussion about the future impact of this week's tech and world news leaning towards the singularity. I'm Nathan Waters. I'm Trista Grace. You. What do we got this week, man? Uh, this stuff actually quite a lot, kind of epic amounts of stuff. Uh, first one I've got is the cult of less living out of a hard drive, how people are getting rid of everything and just using digital copies. Cool. Dude, Android <laughs> has like voice actions. Sweet. Crazy awesome voice actions. Epic. And uh, this is a quote about uh, from Google CEO, uh, Mr. Schmidt, saying that, uh, yeah, that uh, they want Google to actually predict what you're doing and tell you what to do rather than just being a search box. Sweet. And uh, you remember the Game Points talk from way back? The, the guy's name is Jesse Schell. He's got a new talk out, two hours long, worth watching. Awesome. Sweet. <laughs> What's our singularity topic this week as well? Um, singularity topic, well, actually going off uh, what uh, Schmidt was saying about, yeah, the, the actually being told what to do, recommendation like engines. Given the information. Given the information by the machine yeah. rather than actually asking for it. Sweet. Yeah, that should be a good one. So who should start off? Um, you should start off. Okay, yeah, okay. Land on that one. Yes. Okay, I'll start with this one. Um, there's this YouTube video of... Android's just released these new actions for, I think it's only for Android 2.0 or 2.0, no, 2.2, the, the latest like Froyo edition. Mm -hmm. um, and what you can do is just speak into it. Like voice actions, uh, voice recognition is just ridiculously accurate now. At least according to this video. I don't know how it works in real life. <laughs> I'm still stuck on the stock 1.6, still waiting to root it, root my Android. Uh, you know, <laughs> I love that. I love that phrase. It's never going to get old. I'm waiting for, for the next Cyanogen mod, the the latest one. They're in the uh, the release candidate stage at the moment. I'm waiting for a Cyanogen mod six, the official version of that. Right. But anyway, this is crazy because it's like already you can actually do the and you can do this on the iPhone. Yeah, you just speak into it whatever you want to search and it yeah. it does it fairly accurately. But with this, I mean, you can open up apps. So just say open Facebook, opens up that. But you can also do things like send an email, send a text, but you actually say like... Send text to Bill Byrne. Let's meet at 6 o'clock on 5th Avenue outside the Guggenheim Museum. That I love. That is the best yeah. way to just send a quick message to someone. I, 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 I want that. I want, I want it. <laughs> and even the email, like you just say who you want to send it to, even multiple yeah. recipients, like <laughs> multiple people. Just type, like, uh, speak it out. It puts it in there. If you want to add more, just hit another button, add some more. I mean, I think this yeah. is going to be, like, the main voice entry for mobile phones. The way to interact with it. I mean, there's no real reason why it shouldn't be, uh, apart from that we just don't have voice recognition at that level yeah. yet, but that's going to be there in well, a few years. Well, I mean, Google's so pretty much perfect at this because they oh, take God. every single voice recording and they that you it. do, and well, they keep a record of it, and then they, they yeah, use, use that to enhance their algorithms and yeah. make it better. Oh, it's fantastic. Well, so where do you think this will go with it? Like actually speaking into a device, do, do you think we'll still need the screen? Do you think it'll just be down to like a little mic or do you think we'll always have the screen or something screen. Like Yeah. Fair enough. Like we'll see when you start talking always... about maybe, I don't know, like a hot overlay or something, like no actual uh, interaction with it. Do you think you could actually speak into say just glasses with the hub? Maybe. You could actually do it that way. But you still have that visual feedback. You still have the visual feedback, like, yeah. You're always going to have visual feedback. That's that's kind of the majority of what we take in. Well, see, that that's not essentially true with, say, like um, Apple's Shuffle. Like, their most basic thing that they're yeah, just... music. Where yeah, but music? still, music's even with music. Hearing. Like, even with just basic things like sending a text and all of that, that you could actually say, send message to Nathan, yeah. da 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 and it's just done. Like, instant communication permanently on. Like, that yeah. could actually be kind of cool. I guess with text it could work, but then why? who just sends text anymore? Like, well, I mean, just a way like, of contacting you. Like, say I'm just walking around and I think of something, I'm like, oh, that'd be awesome. Hey, send a message to Nathan. Oh my God, you should totally check out this. This is fantastic. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Without even having that'd to be... ever bring up a screen or do anything that way, I just say it to my personal computer. That'd be cool. Or even just the, the basic glasses that just take a picture or a video. Yeah. You see something really crazy that's happening, you're just like, haha, look at this. Like, start record or something. Yeah. You say, you say start record, it starts recording. You say stop, and then you say send it to whoever you want to. Yeah. You like, can, yeah. There's a lot of stuff that I, I, I don't think we're even touching on what could actually be possible no. with this, that using your voice for everything. Like, telling the train to be quiet. <laughs> yeah. What a crazy train. <laughs> I mean, he even did this thing of, like, you know, set alarm for 8.30. Yeah. Oh, like that, that'd be so simple you could just tell it to set your alarm and... so it's just basic things like that that you don't even consider that actually do take you a while to do yeah and what's what I think they're going to end up doing with this and I wouldn't be surprised if they already have is create an API for it 
So yeah. any app on the Android platform and oh, it has cross to. platforms, you know, <laughs> hit, I mean, hit this epic. button, say it, yeah. it creates an app. You'd link any app into it through an yeah. API, converts it to text, you do whatever you want with it. Yeah. Oh, it has to. I, I, I totally agree that that's definitely going to happen, that they're going to allow any app to use the voice yeah. thing. That's just major innovation just right well, there. Let's put a time frame on this too, may as well. Uh, I think we're going to start <laughs> seeing some record. pretty, pretty cool ones in maybe about two years and then taking off maybe five. Like Oof. a big... Far, I think far earlier than that. I think okay. by, the, by the end of this year, it'll start being a major, major input, like getting like, you know, 20, 30, 30% of all input into okay. the mobile phone being voice. Not, no, no, wait, not, not the end of this year because it's very close. It is. We so think you think a year from a now? A year from now, yeah. The, you think of uh, the majority or just a large part of it? A large part. Like Fair 30, enough. 40, getting up to 50% yeah. at least. So I, I think we'll see the first killer app probably within two years. And then five years, I think where it will be ubiquitous that everyone's just doing we've already We've before. already got killer apps. It's just you can't access them in Australia. Siri, I really want to play with it. S-I-R-I. -I. It's like a personal assistant app. You literally tell it what you want it to do. It returns information. Right. That's been out for over a year now. All right, cool. On the iPhone but it's not available in Australia, which sucks. But anyway, I think, yeah, within a year, it'll be, you know, a large percentage. Two years, majority, three years, easily. Like, that'll be the, the input, way. And everyone will be. And then four, three, four years out, it'll start talking back to us. I mean, it's literally not that hard to talk back to us. Yeah, true, true. And that, yeah. that's being, that's conservative. Fair enough. I think it'll be a bit longer. I'm, <laughs> no, st I'm going five years no, until no, that's no, how no, you no. actually use it. Yeah. Because I think oh, the, the actual... Five years. Yeah, five years for people to actually Why be the, the main input for it. This shit's happening quickly. It's exponential, man. Yeah, yeah. But I think the actual talking into it, it's, it there's a lot of societal barri barriers to break down. Okay. Fair enough. Anyway, oh, what do you got? Uh, my one is this story by the... Oh, it's not the Wall Street Journal. It's from <laughs> BBC. It's about how a whole new generation are living out of a hard drive, how they're getting rid of their possessions and they are just giving everything up for uh, digital goods and stuff. Like they don't really need any real possessions anymore. No need for books and stuff. You've got your Kindle, you've got any uh, e-book reader. Yeah. Um, yeah, no pictures, nothing like that. That very few possessions people are finding that they actually need to have. And um, yeah, they're actually saying it's starting to become rather a movement. And uh, yeah, I think this is actually something to speak about because definitely feeling that way myself that need for possessions is, excuse me, kind of shrinking quite a bit, I must admit. And uh, they, they did go a little bit further and say that people actually gave up their houses as well. I don't think I'd go that far. Like this guy was just, you know, just like slumming around and staying at his friend's place. I'm sure they'd get pissed off very fast. <laughs> but uh, yeah, just the very fact of just giving up pretty much everything that you need and just living out of a computer. Which I thought was great. Like these guys are high paid people and they yeah. just put it all back in the computer because they don't need possessions. Well, yeah, I've read about a lot of people, like particularly like freelance web designers who yeah. travel the world, do whatever they want and just work yeah. out of their computer. Yeah, that's it. They've Literally. got everything they need out of their yeah. computer. They can travel the world, do whatever they want in any spot. Yeah. And their only physical possessions are what's like on their backpack. Yeah. That, that's a don't need pretty, a lot. That's a cool life. That's a, it is pretty sweet. It is like an amazing, amazing life. Yeah. I mean, you look at, like, say, most of the stuff you need, you don't actually really need to carry around with you. Like, to actually sustain yourself, most people, well, okay, not most people, but a, a definitely a large amount of people I know, live yeah. out of their computer, that their entire life is their computer. I mean, we're, we're going back to, like, Matrix style and all of that, but it's very, very much so. That all the knowledge is in there. Imagine, like, you know how we have vending machines everywhere now? Mm. Imagine replacing them with, like, 3D printers. Yeah, that's true. If you, if you ever have the need for a physical product, which will be fairly rare in the next decade or so. Yeah. Oh, that's still, no, you'll, you'll still need but physical products, but yeah, not to own. I think to yeah. use and then that's it. Yeah, you just go, you go print it out and then okay. use it and then leave it at a store where someone else might want to use it. Yeah. Just sort of rent and borrow. And Although I will admit, I would miss my plants. <laughs> I do like them. I'm starting to grow on me. It's good to print them out. Yeah, true. I don't, I don't know. Print my plants up. They've got names. They're just blocks of molecules. It's yeah, not true. Difficult. True. And but I, I, I wanted to segue to that because ah, oh, there's this awesome Singularity U uh, video on the future of 3D printing. Check the link. Sweet. Because uh, yeah, I was wanted to mention that this week as well, even though we didn't have enough time. Yeah. So go watch that. Very good. Good. Very very good. Very good. <laughs> so do you think you could live like this? 
You need your possessions. Oh, not so much possessions, just the whole... I don't know, the freelance thing, like, going around the world, would, I don't know, doesn't really suit me. Fair enough. Fuck. It reminds me of cyberpunk stories and all of that, that everything they spoke about there is just really, really coming to life, like, right now, like, you know, all the big heroes where it's just traveled around, like, expert programmers making millions in a city, then traveling. <laughs> it's very true, it's, it seems to be going that way. Yeah. Anyway, cool. uh, what's your next one? Um, okay, this is the, I'm going to call it, like, the Game Points Talk 2.0. Because there's this, uh, you may remember it, uh, I think what it was called, but it was, it's, it's this talk by this guy called Jesse Shell, who runs like a, a game company of some sort, with like 50 employees, he's, he's fairly well off. Um, but he's got these really awesome thoughts on the future of gaming, and right. how it's just really invading all of life, everything. Yeah. Everything is becoming a game. And in doing that, everything has points attached to it, and... <laughs> When things have points attached to it, the most the people who are most likely to take advantage of that is the advertising firms. So like that that whole idea, I'm sure you've heard it before. Um, where uh, like you brush your teeth and you get points for brushing your teeth. Yeah. Like no one cares about that, but the people who do care about it are the people selling toothpaste and the toothbrushes because obviously the more the more points you get, they encourage you to brush your teeth more and they sell more toothpaste and yada yada yada. Yeah. Anyway, with this. He, he kind of goes, he does that talk in the first like 10, 15 minutes. So watch that and, you know, get, you know, reestablished with that. But he then comes up with this plan that's just point by point by point by point of where he thinks this entire future is going to go. Probably over the next, like, start. <laughs> he doesn't give timelines, but I'd say probably over the next decade, this is probably going to span out. Um, he calls it the game, game apocalypse. He's like, at the end, he's like, well, it could be bad or it could be good. But uh, he goes to, I'll, I'll just name them off and you can just go through it. Okay. Social networking, microtransactions, advert gaming, retail gaming, extrinsic rewards, uh, disposable sensors, beauty, TV, customizing, eye face tracking, authenticity, geo tracking, sharing, cloud gaming, transmedia worlds, speech recognition, nooks and crannies, portable screens, uh, quantitative design, whole life tracking. And then the game up Yes, with a picture of a nuclear cloud. Yeah. <laughs> I like it. But uh, it's really, it's two hours long. Just hack through it, sit down with a beer or so, and just, yeah, watch it. Because it's just, he goes step by step of every single point. Like, it's, it's too much really to yeah. to reiterate. It's it's basically just talking about how important games are going to be. Making everything into a game that you should get points or have everything as a gaming yeah. mechanism for what you do, kind of. Is that what it? Yeah, well, it's just, it's just like, well, games are awesome, so why don't we just, like, yeah. integrate them into everything? Like, right now, recording High 45, we should get 20 points. Yeah. Well, I mean, this is a game. I mean, life's a game. Why don't yeah, we do this? Like, yeah, that's true. Why don't we do anything? Why don't we have an arbitrary scale attached to another arbitrary scale? That's great. Yeah. And, but the one thing he didn't mention, which is what we've been talking about for a while now, is these points, everything has points, everything's turned into a game, but that doesn't mean anything less as an economic... You need to unite it together. Yeah, yeah, like points need to be worth something. You need to turn it into an economy. Yeah. So I see, an economy where you can give out free points, because you still need to be able to like just create any points on anything. Mm. Which turns it all on its head, which makes it very weird. <laughs> yeah, anyway, go, go look at that, watch it. Yeah. And then tell us what you think. Like, give us comments back. Yeah. Tell us about what games you'd want to actually create. Like, what would make awesome games around? Especially now with, like, thinking about the Android or voice control stuff. Everything now has the possibility of becoming a game. Like, it really has the possibility. One of the points that, that just reminded me of, um, he was talking about in the car, there's no way you can play games yet. He's talking yeah. about all these different niches where... Or, just niche, yeah. Niche. <laughs> where people would actually find games. And he said, one is in the car. Yeah. Like, he's like, it'd be cool if I was driving along and it speaks to him and says, you know, an orc's heading at you, blah, 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 with this, this, this. And he's like, you know, pull out sword and attack orc. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, that'd be awesome. Yeah. With, and this dude's the whole, like, he's got the whole, I don't know what you'd call it, the quirky sort of nervousness. Yeah. You remember that? Yeah. The, the, oh, he's, he's like, he's that game's like awesome. Yeah. They're so great. Why wouldn't you want to do that? <laughs> I don't know. That invitation. <laughs>